Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having a fantastic weekend so far, or sorry, fantastic week so far, not quite into the weekend yet. Uh, welcome Silviana, welcome Fuang, good to see our members in the class. Welcome Carolina, our chat moderator. If anybody has questions, you can always ask Carolina as well. Welcome Madhav, Chetraj, good to see many students in the class. We are looking at an IELTS speaking part one today, talking about drawing, as I'm drawing this beautiful pink line around the topic of the day. Uh, speaking part one, it's the first part of the speaking that takes about five, six minutes. The speaking has three parts. It's extremely important that you have a strong start to your speaking interview in the IELTS so that you can set the stage for those nice high band seven, eight, nine scores. And this speaking lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. Those are the websites we use for these live classes. They are the textbooks, the audio materials, the study materials. So if you like these live classes, definitely uh, sign up for the premium course there. This is our academic IELTS website here. You can click this big red button that's just above my head there to join the premium IELTS package. It's right there and it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. We are an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner, certified IELTS test registration center. I'm a British Council agent. We have been training students around the world for IELTS for nearly 20 years. So you're in excellent hands with us. We will use this website a little bit later in today's class to speak with our students and to ask some speaking part one questions and give you some band score estimates and strategies and tips for improving IELTS scores. This is our general IELTS website here at gieltshelp.com. Again, that big red button there will lead you to our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. And again, when you press that button, all you need to do is uh, fill out this form and you're off to the races. Here's a little bit of extra help. WRA9 uh, will get you a 10% uh, discount. The price is different in different countries depending on where you live and the local economy, so check that out. You'll see the cost of the course in your own currency there. And we do take PayPal and Google Pay as well for those of you who find that to be more convenient. Uh, students, again, that code was WRA9 for that 10% discount. That's coming from our most recent HD video release on YouTube that has gotten a lot of popularity. It's gotten 150,000 views in less than a week, so you can check that out. Um, you can get our apps. Uh, the apps are available in your app stores, Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help, and you can also check out schedules, vocabulary on Instagram, uh, IELTS underscore AE Help, and G IELTS Help. If you have questions, just ask. Send us an email, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. And you can also get our books from Amazon, our practice exams, if you would like a paperback book. Uh, just search for A Helps Academic IELTS or G Helps General IELTS on Amazon. All right, students, so this is the first class of this week for us today. Uh, and then tomorrow we will have task two writing, uh, listening part three and part four for subscribers. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you get notifications of these live classes. Hit that bell button. Uh, we are the most consistent and most popular um, IELTS live streaming channel out there on the internet, so uh, get notifications. On Saturday, we'll have uh, speaking part two, speaking part three, and then we've got a new Discord 
event for you coming up with our partners IELTS Prep. Discord is quite fantastic and it's absolutely free. Um, check out this link for that Discord event that will be on Sunday. Uh, you need to set up Discord, the app, but it's worth it. It's a very good app, especially if you're a gamer. It's where it kind of was originally created for gamers, but it's used for a lot of other uh, topics as well. IELTS Prep has about 10,000 members. They're all students and they're a great bunch of people. So check that out. Uh, check out the link and we'll do a live class there on Sunday. Definitely that video, that uh, task two video that I was talking about, it's a really good one to look at. Check that out, it's our most recent release. We'll have another one coming for you this week. There's the link in the chat. All right, let's get going uh, with some speaking. Students, IELTS speaking, it's daunting. <laughs> There's a good new word for everybody today, uh, daunting. Anybody know what this word means? So uh, in the IELTS speaking, you're being marked on coherence and fluency, uh, grammatical range accuracy, pronunciation, and lexical resource. So you want to focus on all four of those. And um, whenever you hear new words in these classes, definitely write them down, find their definitions. Uh, and learn them. Learning vocabulary and context is very important. Uh, daunting, if I can even spell that, daunting. It's not a word I write that often. Anybody know what that means, daunting? Andrew says it's kind of like intimidating. Yes, uh, somewhat, Andrew, that's part of it. Yeah, daunting is kind of, it means intimidating scary and difficult all in one okay so uh it's uh it's definitely the right word for ielts speaking students make sure to uh, speak and repeat in this class so uh, you can definitely say the ielts speaking interview is one of the most daunting tasks I've had to do in a long time and that is okay that's why you're here to make it less daunting okay the best trick for a situation to become less daunting is to become familiar with it okay so the best way to uh, be less daunting is to be familiar with a situation. So, you know, climbing a big mountain seems very daunting as well, right? But if you become familiar with the mountain, if you become familiar with the skills and the techniques used to climb a big mountain and you learn the strategies to climb a mountain, then climbing that mountain might just become a little bit less daunting, okay? As long as you don't have acrophobia. Acrophobia meaning the fear of heights, right? All right. Domenico said around a month ago, easing myself back into daily exercise seemed daunting but now it has become a cornerstone of my daily routine domenico it seems like you're missing um yes the subject there i would say the exercise <laughs> andrew says i've already registered for ielts there's no way back now yes andrew uh, just like when you start to climb a um, daunting mountain then um, once you're up that cliff, there's really no way back down. No, there is. You should be able to climb back down. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Alfia says, make your screen at the center. Thank you, Alfia. I just checked my screen there. I've been so engaged with all of you that uh, I just noticed it's a little bit off. There we go. I always try to make it as big as possible, Alfia. 
and sometimes it's just a little bit too big. So <laughs> there we go. All right, students, IELTS speaking part one. Let's make it less daunting. Let's practice. So first of all, um, I want to hear lots of nice full sentence answers. Okay, imagine the examiner is your grandmother. Speak loud, clear, respectful, in full sentences with confidence and with detail. Okay, so that's another way to make it less daunting, right? Is just imagine it's not as scary as you think it is, right? Um, think of the mountain as something smaller and it becomes less daunting, okay? Now, um, we have these um, uh, examiner questions and you should use the examiner questions to remind you of some important inclusions so important strategies to think about the first question that the examiner asks you is may I see your identification they always want to see your ID it's protocol they have to check the ID and make sure it's the same ID you use to register for the test to check in for the exam and you are you you didn't switch with your uh, evil twin during the uh, waiting time. Okay. So, but I don't think the examiner would be able to tell if you switched with your evil twin anyway, except if you cackle. <laughs> Definitely don't cackle. That's called cackling. It's that evil laugh. Um, okay. So, may I see your identification? Give me a nice full sentence for this. Amit says, absolutely, here's my passport, which I used to register myself for this exam. Um, please have a look at my credential, Z. <clears throat> Amit, don't make any mistakes, not even small ones. I see Carolina and uh, Fuang have a little blue cackling person there. <laughs> All right, Amit, um, a little bit simpler. So you've got some really nice fluency here, but a little bit simpler answer, okay? So absolutely, that's a good way to start. Absolutely, here's my passport, which I use to register, uh, not myself, that's a little bit awkward, um, for this exam. Uh, please have a look at my credentials, okay? Then it's good, absolutely. Here's my passport, which I use to register for this exam. Please have a look at my credentials. Chef Raj says, yes, of course, here's my ID, which I used to register and check in. Please have a look. That's another nice way to say it, Chet Raj, sure. Okay, next question, what is your full name? Okay, again, full sentences, everybody. Tell the examiner what they should call you because they're going to ask you that next. So uh, what is your full name? Now keep in mind students, this is IELTS speaking, so make sure to speak and repeat. Uh, copy what I say, copy how I say it. Okay, I'm using a very clear form of English. It's the uh, West Coast North American form of English. Of course, I'm from Victoria, which is in Western Canada. And you hear this um, accent or this pronunciation of English in Seattle, Washington, um, in um, San Francisco, San Jose, Los Angeles, California, Portland, Oregon. So you hear it in all these places. All right. Um, Raquea, one of our treasured members, says, my given names are Raquea Katoon. My nickname is Julie. Please call me Julie. Okay, uh, there's just one problem with this, Raquea. You need your family name as well. They're going to ask you if you don't give it. So my given names are Raquea Katoon and my family name is, I'm just gonna come up with one, Sing. Uh, but my nickname is, is Julie, uh, please call me that. 
or please call me Julie. Okay. All right, so make sure you're accurate, students. Don't make mistakes in these first uh, few responses. It just sounds really bad. Okay. Uh, Domenico says, my given name is Domenico and my family name is LaFauci. Please refer to me as Dominic, which is the English version of my name. That works, yeah. Tell them to call you by the English version of your name. Sure, why not? That works, I like it, okay? It's accurate, it's clear. Then the examiner will say, how are you doing today? They sometimes will, they'll ask you how you're feeling. It's not that common of a question because they know that most students are quite nervous. I like to ask it, I find it actually helps students to relax when they're able to say that they're nervous, so. How are you doing today? Well, an obvious answer that many students might give for the IELTS exam is something like, I'm feeling quite nervous because I have a lot riding on this exam and I want to do really well. Um, if I get a good score, then I will receive my scholarship to uh, study at Toronto uh, University uh, in starting in the fall. Okay, so there would be a good answer to this question. All right, how are you doing today? I'm feeling quite nervous because I have a lot riding on this exam. And I want to do really well. If I get a good score, then I will receive my scholarship to study at Toronto University starting in the fall. Okay. Um, let's, uh, let's take a look at this idiom here before we jump into Yin's response. Do you know what this expression means? Here, riding on. So again, just teaching you some vocabulary. Like I have a lot riding on this exam. Okay. When you're learning new vocabulary students, make sure you write it down. Okay. Andrew says it depends on, yeah. Um, I have much invested interest, okay? It's called much invested interest. It's actually a gambling term. Like um, I have a lot riding on red this time playing a roulette, okay? So think about it like that. Kind of like a gambling when somebody puts a lot of money on to one number or a, I think it actually comes from horse racing because horses, horse riders, and then people have money riding on the horse, okay? So like I have a lot of money uh, riding on this uh, horse uh, to win, okay? Let's call the horse Lucky Charms. All right, so that's where it kind of comes from, okay? It, it means you have a lot of invested interest in it. Okay, uh, Yin gave us another answer for this. Let's take a look at what Yin gave us. I'm very good and I have prepared everything of myself for the test today. Um, okay, uh, students, stay away from words like everything. You can't prepare everything. It's basically impossible. Um, so, use very clear selective vocabulary, okay? Uh, and reflect the full question. So Yin, I'm feeling very good. Not and I have, because and is like plus one. You need to use cause and effect. You're feeling good because you have. So if you want to use a 
a correlative, uh, sorry, a coordinating conjunction, you want to use as. So I'm feeling very good as I have uh, prepared much uh, for the test today. So I'm hopeful to get a great score. Okay, that would be better. Yin, make sure to repeat with the correction here. Okay, I'm fe feeling very good as I have prepared much for the test today. So I'm hopeful to get a great score. All right, uh, next question. What do you do to relax? In order to unwind, not unwind myself, okay? If you say unwind myself, you're going to lose marks, especially if you have me as your examiner, because it's very strange English. You don't unwind yourself, okay? You just unwind. You're not a rubber band. You're not actually twisted up, okay? So in order to unwind, I like to uh, go for a stroll in nature. There is a park, just a stone's throw uh, from my house. And I usually go there for a uh, 30 uh, minute um, walk. Okay. There we go. So uh, again, what do you do to relax? In order to unwind, I like to go for a stroll in nature. There's a park just a stone's throw from my house and I usually go there for a 30 minute walk. Okay, uh, stone's throw means very close. Okay, I taught that last week, I think, so I'm trying to reuse it to remind you of these. Okay, in order to unwind is a nice way to paraphrase, uh, to relax, all right? You want to have lots of paraphrasing. Students, paraphrasing is key to success in the IELTS, okay? Practice it all the time. Stone's throw means very close. All right. Farm Octor says, there are many ways to relax. I prefer to perform yoga and meditation, which helps me to keep uh, fresh throughout the day. I also exercise daily for half an hour in the morning. Um, Amal, there's a few problems with this answer. Uh, first of all, um, we don't really want to know about many ways to relax. I want to know about what you do to relax. I asked in the question, what do you do to relax? Not there are many ways to relax. Everybody knows, most people know that there are many ways to relax. Do not state the obvious, students. Stating the obvious will lower your scores, okay? It wastes time and it's useless. Um, so here you said, I prefer to perform yoga is a bit weird. We would say do yoga, do yoga and meditation, which helps me uh, to stay fresh, stay uh, fresh uh, throughout the day. Okay, so let me type this for you a little bit. Okay, so this is a no. The, there are many ways to relax. Um, instead, you want to write, I prefer to perform. It's kind of weird, even sounds weird, right? Prefer to perform. Prefer to perform. Prefer to perform. Try to say that five times fast. Prefer to perform. Um, I prefer to do yoga and meditation, which helps me uh, to keep uh, fresh and calm. You need a word that means to relax, okay? The question's asking you about relaxation here, Amal. So throughout the day. Uh, I also exercise daily for half an hour in the morning uh, to unwind. Make sure you stay with the question because exercising to relax, yes, it's possible, but you have to say that clearly, okay? All right. Okay, 
Good. Um, then the uh, examiner will say, let's talk about drawing. All right. Now, students, before the IELTS exam, here's a very important tip. Okay. Practice lots of different topics, especially ones you might not be comfortable with or you don't often do. that are not your cup of tea. Okay, so maybe you're not into music, maybe you're not into drawing, you have to keep an open mind, right? So keep an open mind, all right? So let's say the examiner introduces the topic of drawing and I've had this with a few students where they're like, well, I'm not into drawing. Um, you can't think negative, okay? Do not think negative or do not think negatively because then you're going to lose a lot of marks if you're not fluent and you're not giving good answers, right? So never think negatively um, about the topic, okay? Even if it's not your cup of tea. So you shouldn't be like, oh man, did the examiner just drop this bomb on me drawing? Are you kidding me? I haven't drawn a, drawn a picture since I was like two years old with my crayons and even then I was eating my crayons, not drawing with them. Um, so no, that's that's not how you do it, okay? That's not how you want to approach the, the topic. You want to be like, yes, drawing is awesome. I haven't done it in a while, but I always wanted to be a big time artist and that's what I'm going to do. So you open your mind and you think about lots of other words and vocabulary and content that's related to drawing. Um, what are some ways to say drawing? What are some synonyms or some types of drawings? Um, give me some words here. All right, I'm, hope I, I'm happy I can bring a little bit of joy into uh, the lives of some students here. Okay, good. So Chayani Priti say sketching. Sketch, sure. Any other ways? There's lots, by the way. Um, painting, sure, paint, okay. Paint is not quite, I mean, drawing is with a pencil, but sure, we'll take painting, sketching, illustrate, yeah, or illustrations, right? An illustration is a drawing. Very good, Sylviana, doodling. A lot of us might not draw, but a lot of us doodle, okay? Um, so sketch, paint, illustrate, doodle. Articulate we don't really use. Calligraphy is the art of letters, so it's okay. It's a type of drawing. Absolutely. Anything else? Scribbling, yeah, scribbling can be a type of drawing as well. Okay, good, so these are all kinds of, you know, almost like words that can paraphrase drawing throughout your answers here. So let's put those up there, okay? Sketch, paint, illustrate, doodle, calligraphy, scribble. I'm hoping that you're repeating these words. Okay, and in what kinds of situations do we draw pictures? So I want you to think about Situations, and I guarantee you drawing is a very human activity. And even if you think that you don't draw, I guarantee you that you probably have drawn some kind of picture or drew some kind of picture uh, in the last little bit. Uh, when do we draw pictures? What are some common situations where we draw pictures? Okay. Okay, so as a hobby, sure. Let's make this a little bit of a different color. Let's uh, make this one, uh, eh, let's make it orange. Okay, so it's your hobby, sure. Uh, homework, yes, okay. I want you to think outside the box here, students. In IELTS, it's very important to be quick thinkers, okay? Yeah, Domenico says doodling while thinking, okay? Uh, think about some other situations. So for school, for work, yes. 
uh, for relaxation. Yes. Very good. The the J Hub finally when we're bored, right? We all do it. Drawing pictures when we're bored is a very human activity, right? When somebody's just talking and talking, like me right now. Maybe some of you are doodling right now. They're like, Adrian is just a blah, 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 blah. And I'm just over here listening to Adrian. And I'm drawing this uh, funny looking little weird thing because he's such a boring guy. So I'd rather draw this picture of this little cute thing with giant shoes and shoelaces and when we're bored when we're bored or when we're listening to someone just talk a talk a talk a talk right um, we're drawing pictures what other situations okay let's see a graphic design Rahul yeah it was yeah somebody for work right obviously for graphic design for designing a web page a magazine a, a pamphlet right so um, for advertising, right? Ooh, look at Ro Rosetta. There we go. <laughs> now we've got some clever ideas coming. When we're in love. Um, so when we want to show emotions, right? Okay, sh that's right. I see somebody else saying that. To show feelings, right? I bet most of us out there have been draw it's probably the most drawn picture in the world if somebody asked me what picture do you think is the most commonly uh, drawn picture in the world i would say it's probably the heart because people love drawing those little hearts and by the way these hearts are for all of you i'm sending you my love um, so to express love and it's true i love all people and I think especially IELTS students are amazing because you're all full of ambition. So drawing hearts, right? Hearts, emotions, uh, love. Um, I haven't seen this one yet, but uh, for example, uh, communication, right? Drawing a map, everyone. Think outside the box, right? For communication. If you don't speak English and you go traveling, you might find yourself drawing a lot of pictures. Have you seen this building? Have you seen this building, right? So communication, right? For example, like a map. Okay, anybody ever draw a map for someone? Maybe, right? Okay. All right, students, so ideally, when you get a topic in part one, your mind is racing, it's quick, it's clever, it's calm, and it thinks about all of these elements, sketch, paint, illustration, doodle, calligraphy, scribble, um, when in love, with emotions, uh, and these should be coming over here, and the like, right? So that's, the different contexts, these are the different words. So ideally, in part one, um, when you hear the topic, okay, uh, think of synonyms or paraphrasing the topic. And the content of the topic. Okay, put the two together and you will get a great score. All right, so put these two together uh, with good English and you are on your way to a great band score. Okay. So um, let me show you what I mean, okay? Uh, for instance, let's say the examiner says, how often do you uh, draw pictures? And here's my answer. Again, repeat after me. Um, I rarely uh, draw uh, pictures these uh, days because I'm not very artistic. However, I do uh, tend to doodle when I get uh, bored at my desk job. 
just the other day, I drew an entire uh, stick man family going on vacation while my boss was uh, delivering a uh, budget presentation uh, for more than two hours. Okay? All right. Now, don't please don't do that. I don't want you to get fired, but uh, pay, pay attention to your boss's budget meeting. Uh, but here's a good here's a good answer, okay? And it's based on, of course, a lot of these ideas that I get when this topic of drawing is um, introduced. So instead of you know going, oh, I hate drawing. I don't. I'm not even going to talk about this. Um, I think about the topic positively, and I come up with these ideas. Okay. So repeat after me. How often uh, do you draw pictures? I rarely draw pictures these days because I'm not very artistic. However, I do tend to doodle when I get bored at my desk job. Just the other day, I drew an entire Stickman family um, going on vacation while my boss was delivering a budget presentation for more than two hours. Yes, Silviana, the boss might be like that, right? Or they might say, what a great drawing. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Uh, Jotir has a different answer for us. Let's see what Jotir wrote for us. Jotir writes, um, no, I don't draw that often because I think it's not my cup of tea. Um, let's simplify that because it is not my cup of tea. I am very bad uh, with my drawing skills and that's why I don't enjoy the process so much. This is a repeat. So Jyoti, the problem with this kind of communication is this part of your answer, you already said it, okay? Um, you're saying the same thing here. These two are equal. These are the same, okay? You need to give new information. Students in the IELTS exam, it's very important in both the speaking and the writing that you're not repeating your answers unnecessarily, okay? So Jyoti, uh, you would say, no, I don't draw that often. So let's just start here, okay, Jyoti? I don't draw that often, uh, maybe once a month. Because it is not my cup of tea, I'm very bad with my drawing skills. Um, the last time I drew a car, my uh, brother thought I was uh, drawing a bicycle. Okay? Uh, so that would be a good answer with good explanation and example, okay? Answer, explain, example. Don't repeat, all right? All right, just bored. It says, I used to draw pictures back in school, but nowadays I don't have that much time to draw due to my busy schedule. Just bored. You haven't answered the question. So how often do you draw? Sometimes, rarely, never, once a week, twice a month. Okay, uh, you need to answer the question, students. Rakwea says, I frequently draw pictures just twice or three times a week. Not just, because just means only. So I frequently draw pictures at least uh, two or three times a week because I love painting, especially flowers. Good. Dva says, I generally enjoy arts and crafts, so I draw on a regular basis, at least once a day. For example, I was just doodling my sketchbook in the corridor before the exam. Uh, Andwa, that's a lovely answer. That's a very clear answer, okay? That's the way you want to do it, students. Okay, um, next question. What kinds of pictures do you like drawing? Okay. Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Well, in relation to my previous answer, I like to uh, draw 
uh, simple pictures like uh, stickmen. And I like to draw uh, funny uh, pictures. The uh, doodle that I produced during the meeting um, included one of the uh, stick men being eaten by a shark. Okay, so there it is, students. The continuation of a band nine answer, as funny as that might sound. Um, why? Not only am I answering and explaining, uh, but I'm also connecting, right? So really good high band answers in the IELTS, they're very connected. Uh, so you make connections wherever you can. Notice how I'm doing that in this case. I've literally visualized a situation of me doodling during a budget meeting at work. And I'm taking that visual process further and further on the topic of drawing, right? So um, I've literally created this concept of these stick men who are hanging out, and this is how it looks in my mind, on uh, the beach, and maybe they're playing uh, volleyball. Okay, so there's my volleyball net, um, and my other uh, stick men playing with the ball, and they're on the beach with the umbrella, and then uh, here I have uh, one of my stick men that is being eaten uh, by a giant uh, shark, okay? You might not be able to see the full drawing there, but that's okay. Um, there is a stick man there. Stick man's head's on the other side, but I'll put it there. So I've got the doodle, okay, in my head, and it keeps evolving. I keep using that imagery to uh, focus in on the topic and to give more details. Okay, all right, so stick with it. So if you're in the corridor drawing a picture just before your IELTS exam, stick with that. Think about what kind of picture you're drawing. If you're Raquea and you like painting flowers, stick with it, keep with it, and continue to, you know, think about that, right? Um, so I like drawing pictures of nature, specifically plants, trees, and flowers. I think flowers are incredibly intricate and colorful, so they are quite um, uh, enjoyable to draw and paint. Right, Raquea? So that's how we can do it, okay? All right, students, I think you're getting the right idea. And so what I want to do with you is I want to practice with you. And through practice, I want to give you band score estimates and more strategies uh, to improve your scores, okay? Uh, again, uh, we're going on to the website here. Uh, Carolina, if you could just help me out and let everybody know how to do this, put the uh, instructions into the chat and I will show it step by step also. Uh, for those of you who are planning to sign up for the premium course, uh, use this discount code again, okay? You can do this practice speaking for free. You don't have to pay, okay? It's not a hook. All right, um, but regardless, your first step is to create an account. So if you want to speak with me, if you want to practice your out speaking, Akira, I'll be looking for you. You said you have an exam coming up soon. Uh, go to the website, yeah, so Carolina's got the web URL there as well. If you look at the chat, Carolina's got the instructions for you. Um, so we go to the website. We'll go to this one here, aehelp.com. You can sign up for the website, um, either the premium package with the big red button or underneath it, this green button. Uh, you can sign up and try it out. And then you go to your My Student account, um, and in your My Student account, you have computer-based practice exams, you have an interactive uh, course with strategies, you have study plans, you have lesson videos that are HD, audio CDs, you see all the full versions of the videos from YouTube without ads and such on our websites, of course. And then you have the student partner speaking right there, that's what we're using right now. So you click on that and you click that, uh, you know, you're going to accept and be polite. And then you will be in this page here. You're going to see some of our premium students like Andrew and uh, Arkna. 
uh, Raquea, Domenico, um, you will see many of our regular students as well. Uh, once you're in here, send me a message. You're going to see me as master and the blue envelope that's next to my name, my handle. Um, just send me uh, a quick salutation. Hi, hello, I want to try, I'd like to volunteer, anything works, okay? All right, Andrew, uh, I like how you're volunteering and I think you've had trouble in the past, so let's um, let's check it out, Andrew. Uh, I'm gonna, of course, put on my headset students. If you have a headset, use that, of course. Um, Andrew, let's give Andrew a shot here. Hello, sir, can you hear me? I can, Andrew, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, thank you. My awesome. Finally over, so I can do the entire of my time to prepare for IELTS. Nice. So your university class is just finished. Yes, uh, I have one semester ahead of me, the final semester, but it's only going to happen. Okay. From, uh, from I think March onwards, so I still have enough time. Okay. Good. 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 So you're continuing uh, focusing on your English and IELTS studies. That's fantastic, Andrew. I know you had a bit of time connecting uh, through the chat in the past, but it seems like you've figured it out. What was the trick? Yeah, it was a bit complicated and it required some creativity. So I finally found a country that works. I am routed my internet traffic via Portugal, and for some reason it yeah it does work. I don't know why, but. A wide trial and error, finally I discovered a solution. Perfect. I'm glad that you hung in there. Yeah, I mean, that's the reality. You know, we can do everything on our end, but uh, countries still have, I mean, this is um, this is still just the nationalism that's going on in the world where people set up all kinds of firewalls and uh, things in their countries and it makes it hard for some people to connect with each other because of that but well, we're going towards a global society Andrew so one day <laughs> that shouldn't one day VPNs will be a museum piece hopefully <laughs> so all right um, and Andrew um, now that I have you here um, why are you taking the IELTS exam I would like to go for my master's here in Germany uh, in computer science next year Okay, got you. All right. What area of computer science are you planning to specialize in? I'm not sure. They have two specializations. One is complex systems about databases, and the other one, I'm not even sure. I have to look into that. Is there going to be a long process to arrange all papers? Because I'm a foreigner, I don't hold the German citizenship. So I will have a time to think about that. But first and foremost, I need to present that with my pilot certificate. Right. I mean, that's one of the most useful tools to get these kinds yes, exactly. of papers is just being able to show that you're very good at communicating in English. All right. Well, let me help you with that. Let's get into it. So I'm going to mimic the real uh, IELTS exam situation, ask you some questions. Just give me some nice full sentence answers. Are you ready? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Here we go. Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. We are currently conducting this exam in Munich. The uh, test center is 7YQ9J, examiner number 77581, and candidate number 95871123. Let's begin. May I see your identification? Certainly. Here is my passport I use for registration check-in. Please take a look at my credentials. What is your full name? My first name is Andrew, and my last name is Lysenko. Please call me by my English name, Andrew. Okay, Andrew, uh, part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, thank you. I woke up today at 6.30 uh, to do a few mock tests before the exam, then arrived at the test center 30 minutes in advance, full of motivation and energy to do my best here. And what do you like to do to relax? Well, these days I mainly watch movies with my family. Just yesterday we finished the Netflix show The Queen's Gambit. Also, sometimes I go to the gym to relax my mind and train my body uh, and unwind, unwind a little bit. Let's talk about drawing. How often do you draw pictures? I try to find a spare minute to draw every other day. 
uh, I mainly focus on portraits as they are the easiest to draw. What kinds of pictures do you like to draw? As I mentioned before, I prefer portraits because all people's faces are in predictable shapes and I can all, always refer to a photograph. Uh, besides that, I can produce a relatively good landscape picture, especially I've, if I've seen that place in real life. Okay, I'm going to stop there, Andrew, and uh, give you some feedback. You're doing fan first of all. You're doing fantastic. Those were very, very good answers, and I can tell that you're, you know, you're really paying attention to the instructions and advice from these classes. You're giving answers, explanations, examples. You're using good paraphrasing. You're fluent. You're connecting uh, among your answers. These are all great. So as far as your um, coherence and uh, fluency, um, they would be about a band eight to eight point five. Your pronunciation is also band eight to nine. Your grammatical range and accuracy, I would say, is a nine. Um, so overall here, your uh, score would be a comfortable 8.5 so far, okay? Now, of course, you want to maintain mm -hmm. that through part two, part three as well, right? The more challenging parts, but- Yeah, that's the toughest part. Yeah, but so far, you're, you're definitely at that 8.5 mark. I almost want to say nine, but there were just a couple of slight oddities um, why I would take half a band score from you. Uh, so like for example here when I said how often do you draw pictures and you said I tried to find a spare minute to draw a picture every other day. Um, naturally we wouldn't use spare minute here. It's not a mistake, it's just slightly unnatural. So my advice to you, Andrew, is just keep using English and keep using these expressions, especially with native speakers if you have the chance, so that you can get a bit of feedback on where they're natural and where they're unnatural. And this will come, especially if you have the opportunity to live in a, an English speaking culture. So um, I try to find some spare time would be a bit more natural than a spare minute. Mm -hmm. I try to find some spare time to draw at least one picture um, every other day, okay? And there weren't many of these oddities, just one or two very slight ones, and they're not very strange, they're just slightly strange. That's why I said 8.5 instead of nine, okay? Um, but either way, Andrew, if when you're up in that band eight, band nine category, there's absolutely nothing to complain about. Most native speakers don't get into that range without specific training. So uh, keep that in mind, okay? Thank you, sir. All right, so <clears throat> Andrew, just repeat this uh, sentence just to fix it in your memory and then um, we'll find someone else. Uh, here we go. I tried to find some spare time to draw at least uh, one picture every other day. I try to find some spare time to draw at least one picture every other day. Okay, good. So Andrew, keep coming back now that it, you, it's, it's, you're crystal clear, by the way, so we have a very good connection. So keep coming back, keep volunteering, you're a premium student, I'll be looking for you, and then I can continuously help you to identify these uh, somewhat awkward expressions or to help you place them into natural situations, okay? Yes, I will 100%. My exam was on Mar March 11th, I think. Okay. And until that time, I'm here uh, every week in second. Perfect. Perfect. I look forward to it. All right, Andrew, we'll talk again soon. Bye for now. Thank you, sir. Bye. All right. Um, that was Andrew. Let's try somebody else. Um, Andrew, you can hang up on your end. I don't see the button on my end. I might have to reconnect here. Uh, let's try uh, Bogdan. Bogdan, are you ready? If you're there, uh, let me know. I think Bogdan might be a new uh, volunteer. Uh, by the way, thank you for the thumbs up for Andrew, everybody. It's important to support each other and um, uh, give each other uh, confidence boosters. I think that's very important. And, and Andrew was my first volunteer of the week, so it's fantastic. All right, here we go with Bogdan. All right. Hi, hello. Hi, Bogdan, how are you? 
I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Uh, Bogdan, is this the first time that we're interacting? Yes, it is. But I've been trying to contact you lately. And I just didn't have a chance. All right. Well, we've succeeded. Uh, Bogdan, okay. can you tell everybody where you are in this big, beautiful world? I'm from Ukraine. Okay, from the Ukraine. And uh, why are you taking the IELTS exam? Uh, I'm taking IELTS to get a master's degree in uh, geology of gas and oil in the UK. Wow. Okay. Geology, gas and oil in the UK. So are you going to be searching for new oil wells? Is that the idea? I will probably will drill them or I will uh, create some models of deposits of oil and gas uh, by using some special software I haven't decided yet. Okay, sounds very, very interesting. All right, well, let me help you on your journey, at least with the English aspect of it. I can ask you a few questions for speaking part one. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's talk about drawing. How often okay. do you draw pictures? I draw quite often, maybe three or four times a week, but it depends on whether I have inspiration or not. Just yesterday I finished drawing Spider-Man and it turned out amazing. What kinds of pictures do you like drawing? Uh, as I mentioned, I, I drew Spider-Man yesterday and I can say that I really like drawing different superheroes together. Uh, and I guess uh, this is the only thing that I, that I can draw well. And I have lots of pictures on my wall of different superheroes uh, and uh, they look really nice. How can you improve your drawing skills? I believe there are many uh, ways to improve your, to master new or improve your current draw, drawing skills. Uh, for example, by taking some inspiration from other artists by looking at what techniques uh, they're using and maybe uh, implement them them uh, in your own writing or by simply uh, doing some other stuff like playing games uh, can also help uh, get inspired and produce uh, something new. Okay. All right, I'm going to give you some feedback there. So that was quite solid. Uh, good job, good job. We've got some nice, strong English um, to start you. off this week here today. So Bogdan, that would be about a band eight to 8.5, okay? okay? So definitely on the very good level, um, your answers were quite accurate, detailed, easy to understand, great lexical resource fluency. I can tell that you're very uh, confident and comfortable uh, using English. I have, so at this point, um, for instance, okay, uh, this is the examiner's mind. Um, as the examiner, I'm thinking, okay, you're, you know, applying for instance, for example, a master's. Now they might not know that they probably won't ask you about that information, but you know, in this case, you told us that you're going to be, uh, doing, uh, a master's and mm -hmm. master's degrees the minimum requirement usually is a seven, but uh, your supervisors often will like to see a 7.5 or an eight. And the reason for that is because the question that they have in their mind is, you know, if we're talking about drilling for oil and we talk about specific topics um, around uh, geography, uh, geology, are you able to comfortably, fluently discuss that, understand it, express yourself? And I would say yes at this point. Like I have a feeling if we sat down and we started talking about your major, there wouldn't be too many uh, communication barriers, which is fantastic. And you could do a presentation sure. easily. So, so you're definitely at that very good range. What you want to okay. do to be even better is really focus on selective speaking, even if that means slowing yourself down at times. So for example, this question, like how can you improve your drawing skills? You said, I believe there are many ways to master uh, new skills. So here you would add the word new skills or improve on current skills. A avoid the word your, okay? Mm -hmm. Improve on current drawing skills by taking inspiration from other artists. Um, and here, Bogdan, you might want to include an example, like uh, I'm 
uh, inspired uh, by um, uh, who is one of my uh, favorite comic artists. Um, well, let's just go with Stan Lee here. Stan Lee, yeah. For instance. It, actually, I, Stan Lee, to be honest, is not my favorite. It says Buscemi. I would go with Buscemi here. Uh, I think Buscemi made Stan Lee as famous as he was. But um, anyway, that's personal note. <laughs> so, uh, like, yeah, I'm inspired by Stan Lee. Um, and... Um, and then uh, careful not to drag out your thoughts and get into some lower quality English, like um, implement them in your own writing or other things like playing games. That part was a little bit weird. So when you feel like you finished the answer, then just stop, okay? And I think you could just stop right there, okay? So remember this kind of trick that instead of going off into the unknown and lower quality English, it's better to include an example, stop there, and wait for the next question, okay? Okay. All right, yeah. uh, just try this, just so that you remember this for the future. So how can you improve your drawing skills? I believe there are many ways to master new skills or improve on current drawing skills. Uh, lots of practice, of course, and uh, taking inspirations from other artists, like um, how Stan Lee inspired me for drawing superheroes. Okay, there are many ways to improve your current drawing or master new skills. For example, uh, by uh, taking some insp inspiration from other artists. Uh, for example, I usually um, look at drawings by Stan Lee uh, to draw uh, different superheroes. Okay, good. So that was much better. Just a reminder, avoid the you, your, okay? And avoid also saying, for example, um, just because examiners okay. get scared w about that word and then they think you're going to talk forever. So, okay, but otherwise very good. So Bogdan, that was very good. So like I say, band eight, Thank nothing you. to nothing to be shy about there enjoy the rest of the day and good luck with uh you with too your test thank you okay bye for now thank goodbye all right bogdan let's give him a thumbs up that was great setting the bar high uh, bogdan and andrew um some really nice answers okay let's take somebody else um let's see lots of new volunteers today that is so lovely to see uh, let's uh, take Layla, one of our other premium students who we don't hear much from. Layla, are you there? Okay. On the topic of drawing. Thank you for the thumbs up, Bogdan. By the way, many of you will see also a chance to join the premium package up top here. So you can click on that if you decide this is for you. And there's a lot of useful material that you can use here. Okay, Layla. Oh, hello. Hi, Layla. How are you? Um, I'm fine. Awesome. Uh, Layla, just uh, move closer to your microphone. I can hear you, but sometimes you're loud, sometimes you're quiet. So uh, just adjust your microphone maybe a little bit so we can hear you better. Layla, can you tell everybody where you are in the world right now? Um, well, uh, I'm from Kazakhstan uh, and I live in Almaty, but currently I'm in the neighboring city, Yisuk. Okay, you're in Isuk, uh, Kazakhstan, originally from Almaty. All right, Leila. I'm glad that you're here and you're volunteering. I think we have spoken before a couple of times, right? Yes, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. So good for you for being yeah. consistent and practicing. Are you ready for some questions? Uh, yes. All right, then let's talk about drawing. How can you improve your drawing skills? Hmm. In my opinion, in order to improve uh, in my skills, I have to draw as much as I can. Every day I have to do little sketches, even if I'm busy. Also, I think it is a great idea to take examples from the internet and repeat some uh, great pictures from internet artists. Uh, I also like to Mimicry. What are situations? Like, um, what are situations when drawing pictures can help you communicate? Um, for example, if I'm learning um, 
new language and I don't know some words. I can um, and I can repeat this, or, but with drawing and through the picture, I can give my ideas to other people. Also, do um, you use technology to help you draw or create pictures? Um, I prefer to draw with my hands because I like uh, these techniques, especially oil painting. Um, I love to draw with brushes and uh, new beautiful colors. Uh, and also I'm excited to, to get new um, tones. Uh, I think- Okay, let's stop there. Much let's stop there. I'm going to give you some feedback. You're doing fantastic. And don't let the examiner's reactions or behavior uh, discourage you, okay? You're doing great. You started really confident. You're giving lots of answers. And of course, I'm just being like your IELTS examiner. This is what IELTS examiners are like. If you keep talking and talking and talking, the IELTS examiner will interrupt you. And unfortunately, that does make students uncomfortable. It makes students stressed out. So it's, you know, and then they start making more mistakes. They're thinking the problem is with them. Um, so, you know, don't let that happen. Even, even if you get an interruption, um, just, for the next question, remember, okay, I have to keep my answer a little bit shorter and then wait for the next answer, okay? So um, <clears throat> you're giving me good answers. Um, the, the problem is, is you're giving me too much information, okay? Uh, once you have the answer, especially once you have given a couple of answers, just stop, okay? Make sure you stop because otherwise the examiner will interrupt you. They have to try to get to part two and part three within the 12 to 15 minutes, okay? Is that clear? Oh, sure, because okay. of the uh, time regulament. Exactly, yeah. And they don't know, like, unfortunately, there's this issue with some teachers online and in schools telling students to keep talking until the examiner stops you, which is terrible advice because it leads to all kinds of bad communication and low scores. And so, but this happens. So a lot of people show up to the IELTS exam and they just try to keep talking and talking. So the examiners get used to interrupting uh, the candidates, okay? So I'm trying to change that <laughs> one candidate at a time. Um, but remember to have a good start uh, and a good finish to your answers, okay? So strong start, strong finish, wait for the next question, especially with your answers. You're giving me really good answers, so I don't want to, you know, drop your score, right? Um, I think that your answers were, were easily a band 6.5, okay? Easily a band 6.5 going on to seven. Um, you said for my first question, hmm, in order to improve uh, my, you said in my skills. So you have a couple of slight oddities, um, but they're not terrible. So in my opinion, in order to improve my skills, I have to draw as much as I can. I have to do the little sketches, even if I'm busy. It was a good answer. Okay, so once you finish it, then just stop. Um, what are situations when drawing pictures can help you communicate? You said, for example, when you're practicing at home, um, always avoid this for example. So train yourself to not say for example, not say you, not say things, okay? Uh, use the question instead. Instead of saying for example, you can use the question. Uh, you can say uh, drawing can assist me in conveying ideas when I'm learning a new language, right? And that was a very quick, clever response. So drawing can assist me in conveying ideas when I'm learning a new language and I don't know some words. Um, I can not repeat this because you're not repeating it. I can express this through drawings, okay? I can express them through drawings. Uh, like drawing a map to find a store in a foreign country. Can you repeat this sentence after me? And this is for everybody, the repetition. Okay, so um, <clears throat> here we go. Uh, are you ready? 
Yes, I am. Okay, so here we go. Um, what are situations when drawing pictures can help you communicate? Uh, drawing can assist me in conveying ideas when I'm learning a new language or finding directions and I don't know some words. I can express them through drawings like a map to find a store in a foreign country. Drawing can um, assist me to express my ideas when I don't know some words in a foreign language. So uh, I can express them through the pictures like uh, maps. Very nice. Okay, that was lovely. That was beautiful. So very expressive, very clear, very much on mark. And you were very smart to think about, you know, learning a language. Yeah, we draw pictures. Absolutely. You see me do it in the class sometimes too, right? Um, okay, now um, always answer the question. This is a very important tip for everybody, all right? So when you have a question like, do you use technology to help you draw or create pictures? Don't go off topic, even if it's a parallel topic, don't go off topic. You said, I prefer to draw with my hands. I didn't ask you that. I asked you if you use technology to help you draw pictures. So in your mind, you thought, no, I don't because I like to draw with my hands, right? That's what you were thinking, correct? Are you still there, Leila? Uh, yes, uh, I just didn't hear your voice. Okay, For so yes, yeah, so let me let me restate this because it's a very important point. So the question here was, do you use technology to help you draw or create pictures? And you said, I prefer to draw with my hands. So here you're indirectly answering me. You're basically telling me, no, I don't like to use technology, correct? Yes, Okay. Uh, I understand, I, I should say, um, of, I prefer draw with my hands, but I can search in the internet for new ideas to draw uh, new pictures. Exactly. So uh, using the positive side of yes, I do use technology in some ways is usually the easiest. At the minimum, you have to say, no, I don't use technology. So never leave it up to the examiner to try to figure out what your clear answer is, right? Um, so you have to say, no, I don't use technology. I'm more of a traditional artist. I like to draw with my hands. That's the minimum that you need to say so that it's very clear that you're answering the question and you're not just um, trying to get me to figure out what it is that you're trying to say exactly, okay? Because that's usually confusing in our own language, yet alone when we're doing it in another language. Does that make sense? Leila, what I'm saying there? Sure. Okay, uh, good. I understand. Okay, so let's try this one more time. No, I don't use technology. I'm a traditional artist. I prefer to draw with my hands. However, I do search on the computer for some ideas. Uh, no, I don't use technology because I'm a traditional artist and I prefer draw with my hands. But I search in the internet by my gadgets to find uh, new ideas. Much better, okay? Now I have a much clearer concept of how technology is related to your drawing skills, okay? So um, just practice, you know, and you're doing great. And I think that you're definitely uh, capable to get even as high as a band 7.5 within a month's time of just focusing on shorter answers and keeping with the topic of the question, okay? Okay, thank you, Andrian. You're very welcome. Have a lovely day, Layla. Bye. Goodbye. All right, thumbs up for Layla. That was great. Okay. All right, uh, let's take somebody else uh, for uh, today. Let's see if we can reach out to Nasat. I think Nasat is maybe someone new um, that we haven't. Um, uh, practice with yet. Nasat's got a few messages for us here. Nasat, are you ready? Hopefully, Nasat is there. Nasat says yes. Right, Nasat. 
pick up that ring. Right, two more rings. This side. One and two. I'm not sure what happened there, Nasad. Maybe check your system. Make sure everything is working well. Um, let's try Asha, one of our premium students, who I'm not sure if we've spoken to before. So let's see if Asha is here. Asha says, I have my test on the 21st. I would like to volunteer. Ooh, Asha, two days. Absolutely. Are you ready? Let's give Asha a chance. Some last minute studying. 48 hours to go, or maybe even less, depending on the timing of the test and the time zone. Asha, if you're there, let me know. Here's your chance for some questions. Akira is giving the nervous emoji there. By the way, if your name is different in the uh, chat than in uh, YouTube, let me know. Sometimes uh, you're using different names and it's hard to identify who's who. So Asha, if you're there, let me know, okay? I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe not. Okay, let's try somebody else. It happens, people get up, they go, they go to sleep, have a sandwich. Althea, are you ready? Let's try Althea, if Althea is there. Althea, if you're ready, let me know. Just send me a yes I am or here we go and then uh, I will reach out to you. Just sent you that message. Hopefully you see it. Hopefully it's a, not a system thing on my end. All right, Althea, if you're there, let me know. Are you there? Are you ready? System seems to be working on my end. Well, Asha says I'm here, I'm ready. Alfie didn't get back, so let's try Asha. Yes, you definitely wanna have a good internet connection, students, especially when you're running YouTube together with a chat program, right? Ideally Wi-Fi LAN connections. Yes, I can see you're seeing some network issues. The other thing you can try students is just refresh the page. Okay, we'll try one more time, Asha. Hello. Hello. Hi, Asha, how are you? Uh, fine, sir. Good, Asha. All right, so you have an exam on the 21st of January. Why are you taking the IELTS test? Uh, I'm taking this IELTS because I have to take an additional degree in food science and nutrition from okay. U.S. Okay, science and nutrition in the U.S. All right, Asha. Yeah, um, it's and food science and nutrition. Okay, and what country are you in? I'm in India. You're in India currently, got it. All right, Asha, well, I will help you with this mission. Are you a nutritionist? Uh, yes, sir. Currently, I'm a research scholar. I'm doing PhD in food science and nutrition, but I would like to take an additional degree in food and nutrition from US. Okay, food, science, and nutrition. If you had to yeah. eat just one superfood, what would you eat? I I feel it's uh, it would be uh, prunes, nuts, and oil seeds Pru because it's full of uh, yeah. Prunes. I'm just I'm taking notes here. Prunes, nuts, and what kinds of seeds? Uh, like it could be flax seeds, chia seeds, 
so uh, maybe they are uh, it's a trend that they are super foods these days okay good i'm eating a lot of those so i am feeling good about that now flaxseed is um part of my regular diet so good okay all right asha well let's get back to drawing and uh, i'll ask you a couple of questions are you ready yes okay then let's talk about drawing here we go do you use technology to help you draw or create pictures if yes why uh yes of course i think uh that uh i can uh, use digital technology because it's uh, it is a way to transform artwork uh using a variety of techniques and Asha, I think I might have lost you there. Are you still there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay. I'm, uh, I just lost here. the end of that. So um, if you can continue, uh, let's try it one more time. Do you use technology to help you draw or create pictures? If yes, why? Uh, I think, yes, of course. I think digital technology is a way to transform artwork. Uh, hello. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I think you might be getting uh, yes. cut off, but that's okay. Let me ask you the next question here, and then we'll go back to okay. that one. If you could draw one amazing picture, what would it be? I think the uh, picture I would like to uh, try my hands on uh, are mostly the floral designs. All right. Um, yeah, so when you say uh, a sentence, I think, Asha, and then you keep talking, it overloads your bandwidth, and maybe that's why um, we're losing the end of what you're saying. But it's okay because I can still give you a very important tip uh, to help you improve your IELTS band score um, two days from now on the weekend, on uh, Saturday, I guess, on the 21st. Um, are you there, Asha? Can you hear me? Hopefully you are, because I have a very, very important tip for you, okay? Does anybody know what my very, very important tip will be for Asha? I've said this a couple of times in uh, today's class, and I'm wondering if anybody picked up on this with Asha's answers. Okay, uh, Bargav, you're definitely on the right track, okay? So what's the tip? What's the tip, students? And this is an important one for everybody. Suraj says, maybe confidence. No, I think Asha was actually quite confident. So Asha, if you hear me, I think your confidence is good and you should stay confident. Utam says, practice unfamiliar topic. No, students, the important tip is uh, Kira says answer directly use the question okay use the question in your answer to give a whole and direct response okay so do you use technology to help draw or create pictures and Asha says yes of course I think digital technology um, Answer it directly. Yes, of course I use, and don't use of course because how should the examiner know, right? So yes, I use uh, technology uh, to uh, draw and share uh, images. I think that um, digital technology is especially useful Uh, because it is a way to transform simple artwork into uh, 3D images and share it uh, through social media with friends and family around the world.
Okay, so use the questions. When it's a conditional, if you could draw one amazing picture, what would it be? Instead of going directly into the response part, so I think the picture I would like to try my hands on, say, given the chance uh, to produce, uh, what is an amazing picture called? So when you draw an amazing picture or when an artist draws an amazing picture uh, it's one word i think many of you know it use this vocabulary what's the word there we go andrew very good it's a very good fuang it's a masterpiece given the chance to produce a masterpiece that's how you pick up lexical resource marks masterpiece i think the picture i would like to try my hands at uh, would be a fruit hat uh, similar in style uh, to paintings by the famous artist uh, Frida. Okay, so something like that okay repeat after me so given the chance to produce a masterpiece I think the picture I would like to try my hands at would be a fruit hat uh, similar in style to paintings by the famous artist uh, Frida okay great so just visualizing it and coming up with it right use the question students use the question it's very important so asha in your exam on the 21st okay practice in the next 48 hours this style of response where you use the question paraphrase it reflect it i think your english is good enough for that and i definitely think it's going to help you uh, get a better score than currently okay so good luck asha on the test all right um, students, uh, we were using aehelp.com for today's interactions. Again, to join our premium IELTS package, you can click these big red buttons. It's a one-time payment, as I mentioned. I'm going to sign out for today, but I'll be back tomorrow with writing and, um, is it listening? I'll check here in a second. Okay. I'll let you know what's coming up tomorrow for the classes. It will be... Task two, uh, writing, and uh, we've got listening parts three and parts four, if I'm not mistaken. I'll double check on that. Um, but uh, it'll be definitely some task two writing and then most likely some listening um, after I check into it. So that's coming up tomorrow. The first class will start a little bit earlier than uh, this class today, a couple hours before, so hour and a half before. So. Uh, keep that in mind. And again, uh, visit aehelp.com and gltshelp.com where we have all of the content, materials, practice exams, audio materials, videos that power these live classes. It was fantastic to connect with some of our premium students today in the chat, as well as some new um, viewers who are joining up. Um, and I will be looking for some of our regular students later in the week as well. Thank you, Carolina, for moderating the chat, helping students to stay focused and to learn some important ideas uh, for the IELTS. Have an awesome rest of your day, everybody. Keep up the good studies. I'm here to help you. Send me an email if you're lost. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from beautiful Victoria here in British Columbia. Bye for now, everybody.